I'm Robin Probert. I'm head of the technology and training section here at the Millennium Seed Bank. The Millennium Seed Bank project is really a network of international partnerships that seeks to collect and conserve plants that are important to people. Plants that could be important in the nutrition and health of people. Um, we also work on rare and endangered species. We focus on plants that are endemic to particular countries on the grounds that if we, if we lose those plants, we've lost them uh, from the planet. Our seeds are collected uh, in our partner countries around the world. We're currently working with uh, 54 countries, um, 100 organisations in those countries worldwide. We've recently had an expedition in Chile and uh, that collection has, has come in in the last couple of days. So what we're doing is, um, this is the first batch of um, Chile seed that's arrived back from the trip in 2009 and we're just checking them off the list to make sure we've got everything that's meant to have been sent back. Um, there's a few interesting things. We've got a big bag of Fitzroy Cupressoides, which is a really rare tree in Chile. Um, we collected over 127,000 seed while we were there. So the seed bank will receive 60 odd thousand of these back and the Chile will, seed bank will bank the rest. So the first and most important step is to reduce the moisture content of the seeds, which we do in our temperature and humidity controlled dry rooms, and that enables seeds then to be stored for, for long periods of time. And then the next step is to clean the, the seed samples, to remove the, the debris and plant parts that would have been harvested at the time of collection, the inflorescences and so on. It's a very gentle process, and the aim is to end up with a pure sample of high quality seeds the final stage in seed cleaning is that we x-ray a sample of seeds just to confirm that the seeds are in fact healthy, that they contain a healthy embryo and are probably alive. The next step is to put them into a suitable container, an airtight container, which protects the seeds from reabsorbing moisture when we then put them into the seed bank, which is at minus 20 degrees centigrade. Once we've got our seeds safely stored in the seed bank, the first thing that we need to do after that is to, to perform a viability test, to check that the seeds really are alive. And germination testing is probably the most important routine job. Okay, the idea behind the germination testing for the curation section, which is the routine collections in the bank, is twofold. First of all, we want to determine what the initial viability of the collections is once they've been through all the processes and been stored at minus 20. So we can determine that and we need to determine the best conditions to get the seeds to germinate. So when we send the seeds out to a customer, we can tell them the best way to get plants from their seeds. Those two crucial steps, first of all drying down to a low moisture content and then sealing and cooling down to a sub-zero temperature, combined uh, enable seeds to survive for very long periods of time. We think that most species will survive for many decades in a seed bank. Some will survive for hundreds of years and who knows, there are probably some species that will probably survive for millennia uh, in, in our seed bank. We are producing plants really to verify them, so a lot of plants coming to the seed bank unknown. Um, a lot of species have never been known to queue before, so we're looking at trying to identify them. The other reasons that we grow plants from the Millennium Seed Bank is regeneration, so often seed come back in such small numbers that we need to bulk up the numbers for them. Um, and then the other side to our work is experimental, so this uh, Banksia brownii here is a really rare plant from southwest Australia and it's actually dying from Phytophthora in its native habitat and it was actually used and we grew seedlings, I think 180 went back to the country of origin um, and they've been replanted and reintroduced and it's now thriving in its natural environment. It's all about saving plant species really against the current threats that we face, particularly land conversion and climate change. Those are the greatest threats to plant diversity at, at the moment. Thank you.